So two things to be aware of in the context of database systems are the following optimizations. One is interesting orders. What is an interesting order? This is important to keep in mind if you want to do sort merge joins. So if you go back to this situation where we computed the different access methods and we only kept one of the access methods, the problem here is that we kicked out this one. This one has a specific property and that is if you use this access method, all of the tuples are ordered with respect to ID because we assume this is an index using ID as a key. So if all entries are ordered with respect to ID, this would be very nice to use for a sort merge join. So if we decide later on to use a sort merge join between A and B, this join could actually be executed as follows. You could say sort merge join. You could say I read input A using index sequential access. It's already ordered with respect to ID. Here, B is probably not ordered with respect to this foreign key AID. So this means maybe you need to do something like this. Sort B on A underscore ID, A underscore ID. So have a filter condition here. So we would do something like this. Maybe we even want to use the index access here. So maybe we would say here that we use the iSeq operation. I seek A3 on B. Yeah, so what would happen here in this situation? This let's assume that only few tuples are selected here. So this is really selective. Few tuples are passed to the sort operation. Maybe the sorting is then super cheap. Here we do not have any sorting at all. So the overall sort merge join becomes very attractive because we do not have to do a full sort on any of the inputs. Here it's already sorted and here it's already a filter condition anyhow. Of course, whether the optimizer picks this plan or not can only be decided by looking at the concrete selectivities. Here we also have a filter condition. Maybe a similar thing as, he, as we're doing here on the right side might make sense on the left side as well, but that depends on the concrete selectivities. The point I'm trying to make here is that this sorting here could be exploited by looking at plans combining two inputs. So this is a plan combining A and B. When we are in this situation here, we are not aware of that problem, so to say. We are only looking at these access methods. So here, if we only inspect the costs of the specific access plans, this does not survive because we quickly find out, well, the index access here is, is cheaper than scanning all of the relation. Even though we get all of A sorted with respect to ID, we discard this plan because we only look locally at the costs for accessing A without looking at the bigger picture. So that's a problem because now if we try to combine A with B like here, we don't have this option anymore. So if you want to allow for plans that exploit those existing sort orders, you're not allowed to prune this access method here. That's not allowed. Therefore, what a standard query optimizer would do is it does not throw away this plan. So it would consider it. So what is the rule here? The rule is that you differentiate among different subsets. You look at specific physical properties of those plans. This has different physical properties than this one. What do I mean by physical property? Well, physical property or interesting property interesting or physical property is sort order. Yeah, in relational model, we don't care about sort orders, but here we should. So here it is sorted. All the tuples that are returned here are sorted with respect to ID. Here, the tuples that we get are qualified under point query. So for everything here, A1 equals 42. So within that set, we didn't specify anything here. We don't know what the order is. However, here those plans are not directly comparable because they have different properties, properties that may be exploited in bigger subplans. Therefore, in dynamic programming, we keep both of them. So if you had another access method here, let's assume we have another, um, let's say we have an item on another attribute, let's say A2, 
on A. So attributes would be returned uh, ordered by A2. Usually you can only have something like that if you have a replicated table. So A would be replicated once ordered like that, once ordered like that. So here you would have another sort order would be another interesting property. And then you would keep it here in this concrete example. You would already discard it because no one is interested in attribute 2. It's not part of the query. But in general, the idea is you build subsets here in the best plans. Each subset has a specific physical property and only one plan is kept for each subset. And then you can combine them. Then stuff like this happens here, a combination among C and D, where all of a sudden you have a merge join. And you see it here already. Here, the merge join is not a sort merge join. It's just the merge join. Here, the input doesn't have to be sorted. Here, it still has to be sorted. So we do a seek, an index seek here. Then we do a sort. This input goes into the merge join. And here, we do not have to perform a sort explicitly. These kind of plans become possible once you keep those plans with interesting orders, the subplans with interesting orders. Like that, you can change dynamic programming to factor that in as well. That is the first, the most important optimization in dynamic programming. Second optimization is you exploit the graph structure. So what we did before is we looked at each and every combination among the different subsets. So we saw it here. If you combine A and C, A and C, there is no yellow line among them. This is this shallow white line, which means there's only a cross product. You can only combine those two relations by a cross product. And that's how I wrote it down here. Usually these plans do not make sense. Cross products are usually way too expensive. Therefore, one strategy for join optimization is to only enumerate subsets along the yellow edges. So basically what you do is when you have the join graph, you just look at the combinations that are possible when walking along the join conditions. So basically I kick out all of this. So we really get rid of those edges here. Yeah, they are not part of the graph anymore. We really reduce the graph to the edges that depict join conditions. We, we ignore cross product. And that makes a lot of sense because why enumerate them if they get kicked out later on anyhow? So when you do that, you don't even put those cross product entries here into the table. You just look at the stuff. You just look at the join conditions and you enumerate the different possibilities along those join predicates. So depending on the structure of this graph, so by structure, I mean something like that. Here the structure is something like this, but the structure could also be, yeah, if you just look at the joint predicates, the structure could also be something like, let's say, whatever, this, or it could be something like, here you have a dense graph where you really have joint predicates among each and every pair of input tables. So depending on those shapes, you may end up with very different runtime complexities of dynamic programming. There's a huge body of work on that. Uh, if you look at DBLP, you'll easily find 100 papers looking at join order optimization, exploiting graphs and stuff like that. I'll give you some pointers as part of the lecture material, so if you're interested. But for the moment, so to sum up, dynamic programming important is this optimality principle. You can combine optimality principle, which means you can find an optimal solution by looking at subsets and finding optimal solutions for that. That is what I try to depict with this graph here. And dynamic programming makes a lot of sense in situations where you have overlapping subproblems because then you can save a lot of work. In a relational query optimizer, you build bigger plans by combining smaller subplans into bigger optimal plans. And there are two optimizations you really should keep in mind. The first is consider interesting orders. Interesting orders are important to allow for plans with Merge joins, that is something you should keep in mind, which means it's not only one plan that survives here in the table, it's multiple plans with different interesting or physical properties. The second optimization is something I would really do when implementing a query optimizer is exploit the graph structure. Don't blindly combine all the input tables using cross products, just combine them if they have a joint predicate specified with that you can if you do that you can gain a lot in terms of performance if you liked this video don't forget to hit the like button thank you so if you want to see more database videos be it in english or in german take a look 
at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jens Did, or you look at our website, infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.